it's good for you to actually be well informed before paying a huge sum for a course provider hey guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is elfrida and this channel is all about personal growth study abroad and life in the uk so today i'm going to be talking about something very important i'm going to talk about uh, the criteria that i actually used in choosing a course provider for the sq exam and most of you have known already from my previous video if you haven't seen it i'm going to put it at the end of this video for you to see my previous video i mentioned that i passed the sq exams and was admitted as a solicitor here in the uk <laughs> So first off, I'm going to answer this question on, do I really need a course provider to write the SQA? Talk to someone and the person was actually asking this question. The thing is, you actually do not need a course provider to actually study for the exam. Because if you read on the SRA website, you would not find any um, thing to suggest that you must actually use a course provider. On the SRA website, you will find the topics that are actually covered in the different exam so it means that someone can actually self-study study without a course provider and actually still write the exam but for me i knew i was coming into a new system i'm a qualified lawyer from nigeria so i'm coming into a new system and i needed a course provider to actually you know guide me on different things that i needed to know about the course now there was no other place i could get materials from if I wanted to self-study and there's no way I can rely actually on my notes in Nigeria or my textbooks in Nigeria, obviously that's Nigeria. And then this is the UK. So I needed to learn the laws here. I needed a course provider to actually guide me. So if you'd ask me as a foreign qualified lawyer, do I really need a course provider? Mm, I would say yes as a foreign qualified lawyer, because I mean, where do you want to now get the materials and guidance to actually study? But I may be wrong. So if you actually can do it yourself without a course provider, then that's fine. And just like a disclaimer out there, I'm not trying to um, convince you into getting a course provider. Neither am I trying to sell any course provider to you. So I'm just giving a, the criteria, like a checklist that I use to actually get one and i feel like it can actually help someone out there i had to go to the sra website then to actually look for course providers so the sra website has a list and i'm going to put it on the screen the sra actually clearly states that they do not accredit any course provider it is even said here that students should actually make their own inquiries to satisfy themselves as to the quality and suitability of training and the products and the services that the organization on the list offer we have resources available to help you to do this so what the sra is saying is that you have to do your research and make your decision so that is why the list that i actually created is actually very important the first thing i did was to search for their reputation what reputation does that sq provider actually have in this whole business of providing sq materials the cost structure comes to mind um, when looking at the cost provider to actually choose and how do you know the cost structure you have to go on the website to actually research about that course provider what is covered in like the course itself does it include tutor support that is if you actually need tutor support because for me i did not pay for tutor support because i knew i was going to read and write the exams on my own so there was no tutor support if you feel like you're going to need a tutor support then yeah you can go with a course provider that actually covers um tutor support in their fee um qlt has actually had tutor support but i opted out of it i did not pay for it because i knew i was not going to need a tutor another thing about cost structure that i would say is what is your style of reading you need to understand your style of reading before you can even go to a cost provider there are some cost providers that use both videos and materials and then they also have summary notes while some of them have concise notes and actually call these course providers and talk to them, ask them, please, I would like to know what your course is all about. What am I paying for? What, what are you going to provide me with? 
they are more than ready to actually answer because obviously they are selling the course. So they need you as the buyer to actually ask questions. It's your money. So you need to get value for your money. So you can actually ask questions. You can call them. For me, I called QLTS. I called them. I asked questions and they kept on following up. The last thing I'm going to say with regards to cost structure is um, a good structure of revision and practice. And when I talk about practices, mocks, how, how structured is the cost towards providing you with good revision notes or mocks? One thing about the SQE is that the SRA does not release past questions. The only questions that are on the SRA website are templates. So they're just like example questions that are just uh, modeled around the exam scenario, but they are actually not past questions. The mocks that you will also get from the course providers are just based on, you know, things that are just, some of them are just even modeled based on the examples that you have on the XRA website. So you need a course provider that has materials that can help you practice because this exam is an exam that you need to practice to actually write. Reading alone doesn't just cut it for this exam. You need to actually practice because the more you practice, the more you get used to the, like the, the exam situation. In my subsequent videos, I'm going to give you guys tips in like exam scenarios, tips, and also study tips. So don't miss out on any of this series that I'm creating because it is going to be very useful. So at this point, if you've not subscribed, please click on that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so that I get notified anytime that I post because you don't want to miss out on the tea that I'm spilling. Another thing I'm going to say that I used was pass rates. So I had to use pass rate to actually measure who I wanted to, you know, get materials from. So the SQE, obviously the pass rate from the 2020, 2021 when it started wasn't um, that's encouraging, but to just like a little bit, like just 50 or 51 there above it. I was like, wow, this password is actually very low. And, you know, I was scared at that time, but I had to look at the pass rates for students that had used those course providers, especially the different course providers that I knew of. So I had to go on their website and also check them out on LinkedIn. I was always checking them on LinkedIn. And anytime I check them out on LinkedIn, I would check for students that had posted, say, oh, I passed and I used this particular course provider. It's just like the way I shared my, um, my success and QLTS actually shared it on their page. So something like that, I went and I just, I just kept reading. I just kept reading people's passes, their successes and all of that. I just kept reading. I read on that QLTS, Barbary. I just kept reading. Even when some people actually pointed to other course providers, I would go to the course provider and still read. You know, I just kept reading until I was, you know, um, satisfied and I chose the one that I chose. So the next thing I'm going to talk about that I think I had already mentioned is um, support, student support. How does the course provider support students if you you are someone that would need tutor support, then you need to check for someone that will actually support you. Okay. I think that is the thing because some people actually are not really confident and they will want a, a, a student support tutor, mentor, whatever, or maybe even a page or a group where people can actually come and ask questions and all of that. You need to also find out if the course provider has something like that. If that's what you want, then yeah, go for it. Yeah. The last two things I'm going to talk about are very, very important. In fact, I feel like those things, apart from the other things that I've mentioned, I feel like those things are actually very important. The one before the final one is testimonials. What are people actually saying about these course providers? What are the good things people are saying? What are the bad things that people are saying about these course providers? It is very important. Like I told you, I had to look for people that I knew that actually passed these exams. So while I actually watched on YouTube, their different success stories, I needed to chat people up. So I, I think I even had to send a message to like two people who passed with QLTS, Nigerians actually, because I wanted to relate coming from a Nigerian background, you know. Final thing that actually made me choose was the cost. 
So while I now understood that I could pass with Barbary, I could pass with KLTS, or I could even pass with anyone depending on how I studied and how I practiced. I had to look at the money, which one was more affordable for me. So that price was a very important thing. And I feel like most people, because of the money, would actually want to go with maybe someone more affordable or something. But it depends on you still. If you have the money to actually go with a course provider that sells a course for any amount, that's fine. If you're someone that, you know, considers cost as very important and you would like to like stay within your limit, your budget and all of that. Yeah, that's fine. QLT has had like three packages, but I had to do the second package because I didn't have money for the third one. And at the same time, I did not want tutor support that the third one actually offered. So I just had to go for the second one. I've given you a free checklist in the description below. You can actually download it for free. It is a checklist that you can actually use to choose a cost provider. It's good for you to actually be well informed before paying a huge sum for a cost provider. The truth is there's no cost provider that would sell something very low because obviously they're selling value and they would want to, you know, put a good price to that value. So it depends on you to choose who you are actually going with yeah that's it guys we've come to the end of the video if this video was helpful give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe share if you have any questions please drop it in the comment section and i'm going to see you guys in my next video bye